Ah, this is Pete Moore, I'm one at PCM Guns. There's rifles and there's rifles. And this is a rifle. And a design that causes people to either love it or hate it. It's like a Marmite rifle, basically. I think it's superb. Other people don't. The reason being, it's Blazer's K95 single shot. It's a brake barrel action, but don't confuse it with a standard shotgun. There's a lot more going on in the breech area, as we shall see. So, what's from the single shot rifle? Nothing if you can shoot straight. But, and there's the rub, as they say. Basically, you've got one shot, you can reload it. But again, as, you, as you'll see in more detail, the extractor is manual, so there's no ejection. You've got to pull the case out, then you put, put another round in, which is slower than cycling the bolt. So and a lot of people say, well, if I muck up the shot, which can happen, but it does happen, then people tend to panic and they're trying to get the case out. They're trying to get a new round in. And if the deer is still mobile, it's probably gone. And I can see why people shy away from them. I've tested about three or four of these over the years and I've just fallen in love with them. This is the quite the coolest iteration, in my opinion. It's the, what they call, ultimate stock. The stock, as we shall see, looks like a Blazer R8 professional success stock, which it pretty much is, though they've changed it a bit. It's really comfortable, nice head position, lovely pistol grip, and it's brown. You get them in green and brown. The rubber inserts are gripping, and it's really nice. They do a version called the Ultimate Carbon, which is carbon fiber, which is a material I don't like. I just think it looks like it's like it's toys, but that's just me. And you've got leather inserts. And um, if you think this is hideously expensive at 5,035 pounds, then the Ultimate Carbon, which is the same rifle, just different furniture, is even more so. Me, if I was going for one of these things, once I'd robbed a bank or two, then I would definitely just go for the, the Ultimate. It's just a sweet rifle. So it came from UK importers, Blazer importers. Thanks, Frederick, for lending me the rifle. He put a moddy on it and also sent me the Blazer B2 scope, 1.7 to 10 by 42, which just suits this gun like you would not believe. It's ridiculous. And the real good news is, this is my first outing with it this morning. I've been mucking around at the range for a few weeks, looking to find ammunition for it and things and how it shoots. And in the end, I settled on the 170 grain Norma tip strike, which I think was shooting about 0 0.6, 0 0.7. 20 inch barrel, and it was doing about um, 2,400 foot pounds. So pretty good in 308. Not my choice, but thinking about this rifle in 308 makes a lot of sense. Anyway, the good news is that I thought, oh yeah, got to take it hunting nice to blood a rifle and it's a lovely morning here it's an autumn morning it's dry nice weather not too hot not too cold and I was I was up here by about quarter to six in the morning and I was in the seat and silent by seven o'clock and then 20 past seven I saw a movement and it was a muntjac buck you know how they do they dart left and right and their buggers are staying still and I thought well okay I'm ready for it flicked onto fire, I left it on 1.7, had the red dot on, and he came out from the trees into the woods, about probably about 50 yards away, 45, 50 yards, and just for a second he stopped, and that was all I needed. Boom, scratch one, munt jack, and K95 has been blooded. Very, very pleased. So, we'll look a bit closer at the rifle, and as I said before, you've really got to think about it, whether or not you can mentally handle a single shot. So the rifle is a brake barrel. Got a support hitch to show you. You have a, a lateral latch like on any normal shotgun. Open it up, it drops open. You can see here, this is the um, Sewell Jaeger lock. As I said about, as it comes down, it chambers the round fully, gives it the proper headspace correction, and then the final movement locks it up solid against the standing breech of the action. So it's, like that open, drops open. Typically blaser, it has a decocker, which is great. So that's fire. There's a red dot there, you can see. And then when you fire, boom, the gun fires and opening it up, resets the decocker. It doesn't cock the action at all, but it resets it. 
So this is a very safe gun to have, much like the R8, but it's decocker, it's the same principle. Also, if you're cocked and you don't want to take the shot and you want to unload, again, click, that drops back and it opens up. <clears throat> One of the issues with any brake barrel firearm, be it a double or a single like this, is ejection. <clears throat> the majority of guns don't offer automatic ejectors, which will kick the case out for you. And the, K the K95 is one of them. You load it, this is a 308. You push it in with your finger like, and it engages with the extractor claw. You shut the rifle up. And when you found boom, fire, we'll see it shoot later on. It opens up, and what you have to do, you have to get your fingernail in there almost to get it out, which is a bit of an issue. I've been trying it with gloves on, and occasionally you can get the case out quickly, other times you can't. And bearing in mind, if you need a second shot, which hopefully you don't, but, you know, it happens, and you've got to be ready for it, then a glove is a definite impediment to, to a fast reload. So this is in 308. I would probably pick a rifle with a rim case, something like a 7, 7x57R. And the rim case, there's a bit more meat to get hold of. And it makes it slightly easier to get around. But really, you know, if you shoot straight, then it's not a problem. But whatever, whatever I do, but I've got an R8. And whatever I do when I shoot a deer or anything, first thing I do is rack a new round into the gun, just in case. You watch the deer drop, you sit there with it, and you're just holding it ready to go. So with this thing, that's what you've got to do as well. But it does also take your attention away from things because you've got to be looking what you're doing. Whereas with a, a bolt action gun, it's an instinctive push-pull action. But that's the action. This block can be removed by pressing this little button down here, and which is quite good because if you take the block out, the gun is useless. It will not work. It's as simple as that. The other thing is you've probably noticed if you know anything about blazers is it's got the standard blazer mount saddle mount and on this I've got the new blazer b2 1.7 to 10 by 42 scope which for this rifle in a woodland setting is absolutely superb so the Muntjac I shot was about 45 50 yards I had the scope down at one one to set 1.7 which is more than enough you got a nice steady aim there with the red dot on because it was a little bit dull. And this is such a sweet scope. It really, really is. And of course, with beta blars, all you do, flick your two levers like so. Scope comes away. You put it back on. And it's back on. You hold it zero very nicely. And you know you can don't you don't have to put this on you can, you can get the um, the Blazer Picatinny rail that fits this because this is the common mounting that fits the R8 as well so you can put a Picatinny rail on here and put on what you like but I do rather like the idea of having a Blazer scope and a Blazer rifle and I think they really do suit each other. Trigger is superb. Look, it's a single stage unit. That's clear and it is. Nice broad blade lots of room in the trigger guard for a glove finger <laughs> um, and literally that's the brake it's probably about charitably two pounds but it's probably a little bit less but it's it's an easy responsive trigger it's not a matter of looking at it, it goes off there is pressure required but it just breaks which all contributes towards how the gun works which is just brilliant the stock is just simply beautiful so if you ever shot an R8 Professional Success, which is my R8, it is the same stock, they call it the ultimate model, but what they've done, they've fared away a lot more material here, and lovely thumb hole, rubber inserts, rubber insert on the forend, just nice. Everything fits in, beautiful, and this slightly raised comb section is just about right for, for, for the, for the Blaser scope. But you can nominate a number of options for the for the for the butt. Basically, you can replace this with a height adjustable comb that also remembers its position and goes back to it if you fold it down. You can take this off and put an adjustable butt pad. You've got length of pull, angle, and actually height of the pad. 
on you can take that off and you have a recoil uh, reduction insert the forend is very slim with a semi schnabel tip all it does is lock the barrel in position with a rubber insert but it's square it fills the hand it's not too big not too small but i didn't find it a problem at all shooting with it barrel on this gun is 20 inches and it's like a sort of a it's not light it's not medium it's all it's a light medium edging on the light but it's nice and rigid it's threaded 15 by 1 and Blaza also supplied the Sour I think it's they call it Freder and Dedrick moderator it's a reflex can looks quite sexy looks a bit like a, a very slim uh, cocktail shaker but uh, it certainly works well can't complain about that and perhaps in keeping with the roots of a classic style single shot rifle we have a, a barrel band, which is, again looks quite cute. Stripping the rifle is very, very easy as you can imagine. There's a latch under the forend, like an Anson D lid latch on, on most shotguns. You just unlock it, pull it off. Then you hold the barrel or hold the scope and barrel, break the action, and the barrel hinges down and lifts away. Then at the same time, so you press this, pull it back down then the forend goes on and that's it because you can take it apart so quickly and there's no receiver like you'd have on a on a standard rifle you can break this down to a little tiny package and blaza make really nice um, lockable travel cases for these rifles reference the reloading which i've talked about which is a bit slow what I've done, I put a bit of Velcro on the side of the rifle and put a five round ammo sleeve on there. And all it does, it just keeps the rounds nearer to the breech when you need them. So you can pluck them out, stick them in. Okay, just fire a couple of rounds to show the process. So I've got this slider, as I said before. Break the rifle. One in, shut it, up to the aim, pressing the decocker. Open up, get the case, clear it, you can pick it up later. Next round in. Again. Oh. That's pretty much all you do. So it got me a Munjack this morning. It's shooting well with the 170 grain Norma tip strike. And overall, this is just a lovely, lovely rifle. You may think me mad, but I don't think I am. And yes, I would adore one. But I'll be honest with myself, I don't have that sort of money, nor do I want to sell my blaster to fund my R8 to fund it. But there you go. The wishes were horses, beggars would drive. I hope you enjoyed that very much. I certainly did. If so, tell your friends, support the channel, the usual thing. If you want to speak to me, it's pmall.shootingsports at juma.com and I'm off to put my mutt jack in the larder, let it sit for five days, and then I've got some really nice well-hung meat.